Hi, welcome to How To Repair. Today we're dismantling a Bush washing machine and I'm going to be showing you how to dismantle it, take all the parts off the machine and also explaining how the machine works and common faults that can occur. The reason we're dismantling this Bush washing machine is it's got a slightly warped drum and because a sock has gone in between the inner drum and the outer drum it has ripped the door seal off the actual machine and therefore it's just not economic for me to repair it as this is a low-end cheap machine and the components that come off the machine will benefit other people rather than me just scrapping the machine and sending it to the tip. What we're going to be doing is having a look at the program, taking the drum out of the machine and all the other components. Now Bush washing machines are manufactured by a company called Vestel. Vestel produce these machines for many companies which you can see on the screen here. And what we're going to do is take the machine off the workbench and I will show you how to dismantle it. Okay, if you ever need any parts for these bush washing machines, you need to use the full model number and on some occasions you will have to use the PNC number off the identification label. The seal has already been ripped off. If you need to take the seal off, there's normally a band on the actual front here that you would lift off with a small screwdriver and then you would actually peel the seal back. But I just wanted to show you this machine quickly working. Now I'm just going to enter diagnostic mode here but I won't be able to do the full test because I'm not able to connect the water to the machine but it will show you the basic functions. Turning the machine on if you press the delay and temperature she will go into LS and it's I'm not sure if that's meant to be an E uh, but this is a basic test function. Pressing the start pause button once she would go into a full spin and then in the next process move on to the actual fill system which I'm unable to do but you can see that all the motor is working perfectly it goes up to a thousand rpm it drops down once the drum stops you would hear the water starting to go into the machine if it was connected the water valves now have been activated. I can hear the humming noise. This means that it would be filling, filling with water and we would be able to go through the diagnostic test procedure. I will make another video on these complete test procedures on these bush at a later stage when I get a machine in that's fully working. Okay, I've undone two screws at the top to take the lid off, which is standard. Take the soap drawer out pressing the button down on the soap drawer. That's a perfectly good soap drawer for someone. Now we need to remove the facial panel to be able to gain access to the screws top and bottom. And there are basically two screws holding the panel in place at the top. And now there are two screws holding the soap drawer in place. The panel will come away, but it's usually easier if you take the retention bar off the top. So once you've done all the screws and you've taken off the retention bar, this can be lifted up and over. You've now got two screws here, four screws along the bottom, and you have to remove the door lock. When taking the last screw out, make sure you support the panel as you don't want it falling away. And we'll also remove the door hinge as well once we've got the panel off. Lifting it up, the whole panel will come away. The doors are such an expensive item and they're well worth keeping for other people. Now, at this point, I'm going to explain the system to you. We have the pressure switch at the top here, which is connected via the pipe that runs down to the sump uh, hose, 
which is a pressure chamber and sometimes these can actually clog and actually cause false readings of water to be in the machine so it's well worth doing a cleaning cycle once a month on these machines and I will put a video at the end of this to show you what comes out of a washing machine do watch the end of that video heating system is here with the NTC sensor and that's easily removable and we have the door lock here sometimes these plugs can either burn or become loose and that is a common problem on the bush washing machines I have come across these but that's a perfectly good door lock for someone now to lighten the weight of the machine I'm going to take the two uh, concrete blocks off the front You would need to remove these concrete blocks if you wanted to change the door seal. As you can see here, the band is tight against the actual seal. Uh, so you do need to remove these when actually replacing the door seal, but that's in another video. There's normally four bolts on each of these. The inner retention band. Okay, let me quickly explain the heating system. We have an NTC sensor here that sends an ohms reading to the actual circuit board so it can control the temperature. And then we have the element which is an 1800 watt. And I'll just quickly show you how to test these. Okay, let me put the meter there for you so you can see. Uh, this element, as I said, is an 1800 watt element. So setting the range onto 200 ohms, Going across the element, we have a reading of 29.3. Uh, using Ohm's Law Calculator, you would be able to calculate using the voltage and the Ohm's reading to work out what the actual wattage of the element is so you can compare it. It's normally within around 10%, depending on the age of the element. Uh, the NTC sensor, now I haven't got the values of the NTC sensors at certain ranges because as the temperature rises the resistance normally drops on the NTC sensor uh, so I'm setting it to 20k um, on the ohms reading and going across the NTC sensor you, you can see that we've got 8470 reading and of course as the temperature changes on that it will drop I'll show you that in a second first we need to actually remove the element now this is a 10 mil bolt and you can just loosen this nut all the way off till it comes to the end and then give it a tap inwards. This releases the pressure off the seal. Now to remove the element, I'm gonna get the wiring out of the way, you need to go underneath the back and you will need to prise it out and this will release the pressure off the element. And as you can see, this element is in perfect condition. And let me just show you the NTC sensor moving as I warm it up slightly. So leaving it on 2K range. Okay, I've just put some crocodile clips on this for you. And I'm just putting that so I get a good reading on this. Now, as you can see, we've, I've already handled the element, so it has moved slightly. We've got 8,260. If I put my finger onto the NTC sensor, you will see this number start to drop, as you can see here. And of course, the warmer it gets, the uh, lower the value will drop and that gives the reading to the computer. So we've got an air temperature at the moment of approximately 12 to 13 degrees. So that 8,000 reading you were seeing is the value for that temperature. You can see all about Ohm's readings with regards NTC sensors in another video, which you will find on our YouTube channel. But that's a perfectly good element. Okay, let me explain how the pressure bowl system and pressure bowl work with the pressure switch. To take the pressure switch off, it just twists. And let me get this out of the way. And I'm also going to take the pipe off so you can see. Right, the machine fills with water and the water rises in the machine, pressurizes the air in this chamber.
it then transfers that pressurized air up to the pressure switch. Now the pressure switch on new type machines work on a frequency level. This means that it sends a frequency level to the program to actually tell it what level of water is in the machine. This is why machines are so accurate and environmental friendly when it comes to using the correct amount of water nowadays. Common faults that can occur, as I've said, this pressure bowl can get clogged. Also, this pipe on some occasions can get chaffed or worn. And as you can see just up here, there are a couple of marks on the pipe. Now, if that perforated, that means that the water level would be getting a false reading and therefore overfilling because the pressure switch is unable to detect the amount of pressure in the machine. Uh, also, these sump hoses, by the way, small items of clothing can get into this uh, sump hose and also cause problems with emptying. Uh, this means that it would restrict the flow of water being able to get to the pump to empty. We'll now take the pump off the machine, but this is a perfectly good hose, pressure bowl, and also pressure switch. Okay, I forgot to film taking this off. There's one retaining band at the top here that attaches here. Uh, there's also a clip here that fits onto the drum and another clip here that attaches to the pump. Um, common faults that can occur with the washing machine not emptying in the allocated period of time, which may produce an error code on the machine, is due to the machine not being able to empty, as I said, in the allocated period of time. Blockages in here are a common fault. Also blockages in the filter are a common fault and this is just straightforward it unscrews a bit of water still in the pump and that actually feels like there is rubbish in there because it's not coming out and that usually means there are coins actually clogged in the back of the pump but we'll look at that in a second there's one clip for the waste hose and that just pulls off and then the pipe can come away four screws at the front here the pump will lift away and I can see some plastic in there and then you can take off the two electrical connections these pumps are 240 volt they can be bench tested i've done many videos on these in the past and i'm just looking why this won't come out and it is jammed and that is not due to any coins or anything that is calcification which is actually clogged up the pump and you can see the dirt inside here this is why it's very important to actually do a cleaning cycle this has built up over a period of time and if i use my hook here you can actually see the dirt inside this pump and a boil wash with some dishwasher tablets would clear this type of stuff over a period of time if it was done regularly but that pump will be cleaned up and tested and that's a perfectly good pump for someone the part numbers normally are written on these uh, this is a 35 watt pump and I think the manufacturer has put some numbers on here, but you would normally need to use your model number to be able to identify the pump for the machine. I just thought I'd quickly show you this and also show you a close-up inside the drum here. Just by actually descaling this pump, the filter now comes away and it's perfectly clean. And I've bench tested this motor and it's perfectly reusable now and it's in good condition. But let's just have a quick look in here. Now if you look inside where the heating element was, and I'll zoom this in for you you can see the dirt that is built up inside the drum over a period of time and this is why you sh really should be looking at the other video and especially at the end of the other video to see what actually comes out of the machine if you do a service wash on these now before we actually lift the machine down to actually take the motor off and also take the drum out of the machine we're going to remove the program 
uh, because this is in perfectly good condition and will benefit someone and will also remove the soap box and what I'm going to do is just cut the cable ties that hold the wiring to the actual top bracket and what I'm going to do is not remove the plugs I'm actually going to snip the wires so the person that's replacing the board in the future will be able to know which wiring uh, plug goes to which I always do this for people because it does help them so I'm just snipping these wires off This dirt that you can see that is on the program is the carbon from the motor, believe it or not. It gets up in and around the machine and basically covers everything. That's a perfectly good washing machine program. Now you've got the main power supply that comes from the suppressor or filter. So if your board is not powering up ever, that can be a problem with the electrical suppressor or filter has actually burnt out and are not allowing power coming to the program. You've got a part number written on the actual program itself, but this program is designated to this model of machine because it is pre-programmed with all the wash functions. You, on the circuit boards you've got individual relays that activate the pump uh, the heater and other components on the machine these circuit boards are quite exposed and therefore moisture can cause problems with these boards it is a common problem on these bush washing machines that the programs go but this will benefit someone in the future Next we need to remove the soap box and this is straightforward. There is a clip underneath that holds the soap box hose to the actual soap box and that can come away. And that just has a clip which we need to undo once we've actually taken it out of the drum because the screw is tucked up inside here which is quite difficult to get at then you can actually remove the two hoses that come from the water valve via the clips and sometimes you need to give these a bit of a twist to get the hoses off try not to damage any of the hoses but they are quite sticky on occasions and then the soap box actually can come away Okay, while we're at this point, let me just explain the fill procedure. Um, the program sends power to one of the water valves or to both of the water valves. If your machine is not filling with water, you may have a problem with the solenoids on top of the water valves being burnt out. You may also have a problem with the filter at the back of the water valve. These can clog up with dirt over a period of time, and I'll show you that later in the video. Uh, uh, also, each of these solenoids sends the water to separate actual compartments in the machine. So let me explain how it works. If one solenoid is active, therefore it means that it would send water through to the compartment on the pre-wash. If the other solenoid was activated, it would go through to the main wash. If both solenoids are active, therefore it's letting a certain amount of water through which will go through to the conditioner compartment. This means that the conditioner at the end of the cycle is then washed into the drum so it softens the clothes up. So either one or both of the valves are active at any point. And as I said, cleaning this out is not a difficult job. They do come apart with these clips and these are cleanable. Right, next we're going to remove the motor, the belt and any other components behind here. Uh, there's also an identification plate on the back and as you can see they've put a wiring diagram which is quite useful for people as well and you've got the model number of the machine here and we can also see that this was manufactured for Argus Limited and it was made in China. Uh, so we we'll just unscrew the back panel, four screws Now to take the belt off is quite easy. If you put your fingers on the belt 
and lift it towards you while rotating the belt will come away to be able to identify the belt correctly there are normally numbers written on the belt now there's a manufacturer's part number which is written on the belt here which is 30273066008 but there is also a belt size and this means that it's giving the dimensions of the belt so this belt is a 5 epj 1281 let me explain this number the 5 epj is the profile and how many ribs the belt has got and the 1281 is how many millimeters in diameter the belt is thought that would be useful for you next we need to remove the motor okay the motor has a plug on it and i'm just going to cut this cable tie that holds it to the drum and i'm also going to remove the other cable ties this then can be unplugged there's usually a couple of clips that hold the plug in place and the plug will come away with the earth wire and this plug is actually a seven pin plug on the wiring but there are two additional uh, plugs which or connections which have got a link wire uh, to create a separate field on the windings uh, this motor as we saw earlier is in perfect working condition the only thing we need to do is actually just make sure that the brushes have got a good amount of life in them for anyone else buying the motor in the future there is only one 13 mil bolt on this sometimes there are two depending on the model of machine so we'll just quickly do that this will come away by the way the red stuff that you can see on the bolt here is loctite so it doesn't actually undo this then drops down and will come towards you and the motor can come away when it comes to the motor they're pretty straightforward uh, as we said it's a seven pin but with a uh, double loop wire two go to the taco two go to the carbon brushes and the rest of the connections are all to do with the windings on the motor the motor itself is a h xg-144-52-67 sometimes the manufacturer will put the full part number for this motor but you need to make sure you match it up correctly common faults that can occur with the motor of course the carbon brushes can wear out and also there has been on a few occasions where the carbon brushes have overheated that the carbon brush itself can stick in the holders um, as I said this is a seven wire connection but there is a link wire going to the motor as well so two go to the tachometer which sends the RPM reading to the circuit board whether to increase the power going to the motor on a spin cycle or wash cycle whatever it's on and two of the wires go to the carbon brushes and the rest of the wires go internal to the actual windings on the machine while I'm here I'm just going to quickly remove the waste pipe and that just clips in and then you're able to thread the waste pipe through and that's a perfectly good waste pipe for someone okay to remove the drum from the machine we need to take the pins out of the suspension legs and if you look closely at the bottom here there is a pin on the a plastic lug that locks the suspension legs in just press that down and then pull the actual main locking pin out of the machine and these are quite difficult to get out you do need to put quite a bit of force on them once you've taken the pins out of both suspension legs we're ready to actually lift the drum out of the machine but first we'll take the water valve off now as i was saying earlier about fill cycle in the back of the water valve is a filter and these can actually pull out so you can clean them this one's in actually well there's a little bit of dirt that you can see on the side there 
but that's nothing just give that a wash in the sink and there's a secondary filter behind here as well because it's very important that no debris gets inside the water valve as that would cause it to stay open when there's no power this means the machine may be filling overnight to take the water valve off just pull the connections on the solenoids and they are quite sticky on this one and then there's two screws and the water valve will come away again this has got the part number stamped on it on the side here uh, and also this is a good condition valve so I'll resell this as well now to lift the drum out of the machine you would normally have two people uh, because you have to actually take the springs off on either side when lifting the drum out it might also help you to remove the concrete weight but because I've got a hoist I don't need to worry about this I can just bring this down there is a hooking lug on the actual drum I can take some weight off this and now I'm able to remove the springs now if you are replacing the bearings on these machines do take note of which way the spring came off it is quite important to have them on correctly do the same on the other side make sure all the wiring is detached from the machine And there we go we have the drum now I do like these Vestel machines for the simple reason you can replace the bearings although we live in the United Kingdom and a lot of people would say oh the machines only a 250 pound machine I'll just buy a new one there are a lot of people around the world who do not have the uh, financial capability for just replacing machines so for them to be able to split the drum is a very important factor to be able to either repair the or replace the bearings and spider or to actually strip the machine out to clean it whatever they wanted to do two pins that hold the suspension legs to the actual drum uh, the shaft has come out on this one because I forgot to take the pin out and there we have the soapbox hose screw which I was on about that we need to undo to replace this uh, soapbox hose straightforward simple once this is out you would also be able to replace the drum paddles I believe there is a pin configuration that you have to bend down to slide the panel out in case you ever needed to replace any of the paddles uh, but as I said pretty straightforward basic machine yes it's bottom end of the market and it's a cheap machine so a lot of people would never go to the uh, time to replace the bearings but it is possible to replace the bearings on these machines which I do like again uh, all the components for this machine I will put on the website I hope you enjoyed the video thanks very much indeed for watching there is a video now on how to clean drums and how to remove mold and it's very worthwhile watching at least the last three minutes of the video for the simple reason you would not believe when you do a clean cycle on these drums how much dirt actually comes out of it and you're washing your clothes on a regular basis in this environment thanks very much indeed for watching do remember to support the website by buying the parts off us and if we really helped you you can always click on the buy paula beer page to donate to the website and support us thanks again for watching